Your heart is not a pump, so what is it? Hint, your heart has its own memory, and people who get heart transplants often have brand new memories after the heart transplant. What's going on with the heart? Watch this video to find out. Hello, my name is Jesse. Welcome to the channel, Open Source Owners, where we talk about like, what if humans had an owner's manual? We try to actually provide a bit of an owner's manual. It's a tall order because it should take thousands of years to actually get a complete owner's manual, but we try our best. Let's figure out what's going on with the heart. It's very, very interesting. All right, the heart is a brain. That's one way we could think about the heart. Um, so the heart is not a pump. It literally cannot push the volume or pump the volume of blood through the tiny sort of um, super constricted space of capillaries and arteries. So the capillaries are so tight and small that the blood vessels actually get stuck uh, into the capillaries. The blood vessels have to shrink and really be pushed through. And they, the heart is incapable of doing this in terms of just the sheer physics of what the heart can do. So what the heart actually does, more accurately than thinking of the heart as just a pumping of the blood, is it helps induce spin, and obviously it oxygenates the blood, but it helps spin the blood. And the blood it has been found in chicken embryos, and I believe human embryos as well. The blood actually begins spinning first, and then the heart begins to pump second. So the blood has its own natural spin, and then the heart helps regulate the flow of blood. So this is already a completely different view of how the heart works. You don't have to take my word for it. You can look around in PubMed and stuff like that. There's some pretty clear evidence, and it's been building since the, the mid-90s, really, about the heart as being a much more complex system than just a pump. And I think it's fascinating that the heart literally cannot pump the full volume of blood. It just does not have the physical capability. So what does it do? It induces uh, spin into the bloodstream. The heart is also a brain unto itself, as we talk about here. It has 40,000 neurons. Now, neurons are associated with chemical, it's a communication network of the body, and they're associated primarily with the brain, but really, they're also associated, very importantly, with the gut. And you can watch this video that I'll link here related to the gut and how the gut is also like a brain. So the, the heart is sort of a third brain. We really have three brains. Both the heart and the gut sense the inner world and let the brain know what's up. So actually, if we had to pick a hierarchical order of what's more important, right now I'm going to say that the heart and the gut are more important because they're feeding information about the world, whether it's safe, whether the brain needs to do something to the brain, and then the brain uh, moves down in a hierarchical manner and it sort of sends out like, okay, here's what I think we should do. But without the information flow coming from the heart and the gut, the, the brain doesn't really know what's going on in the world. Because remember, the brain is encased in darkness. You can poke a physical brain and it doesn't feel pain. The brain is a weird organ. It has to get all of its information elsewhere, and it does so largely through the gut and the heart. So the internal feeling state that the, the heart and the gut are always sensing in terms of how are all the systems of the body working is called interoception. Intero just means within. Um, and this is the name of that awareness, that internal mechanism of understanding what's going on. And there are fibers that connect to the heart and the gut that move up through the spinal column, through the cranial nerves, called afferent and efferent. So there are 10 times more afferent fibers than there are efferent. So the afferent fibers, as far as I understand it, are, take signals from within the body that are perceptions from within the body and probably from externally as well. And then they feed that information to the brain. And the efferent fibers are the ones that cascade back down as a feedback mechanism, sort of a loop mechanism that back to the endocrine organs and the body systems to then uh, engage in whatever makes the most sense. So afferent is information from the body up to the brain, and, and efferent are, is brain information down to the body, okay? Afferent and efferent. I know it's confusing. You have this slide. You can always try to just like, if you need to remember it, you can write it down or you can just use this slide. So we have afferent and efferent. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So that the, the heart is a sensation organ. It's a communication organ. It's using neurons just like the brain. So the heart really is a brain unto itself. And as I said at the beginning, heart transplant um, patients are well known to receive new memories and new likes and desires and connections to things that they never had before when they get a heart transplant. So the heart contains and holds memory as well. And you'll see how the heart actually talks to the hippocampus, which is directly related to memory in a moment. Okay, so the heart is an endocrine organ. It's, it's not a pump. It's an endocrine organ. So it's a brain. It's also an endocrine. Endocrine just means hormones. It's a hormonal organ. Um, so the heart produces chemicals just like the brain and the gut, including oxytocin, the bonding hormone. So the heart actually produces, think about this for a minute, 
all poetry, all stories, all human sort of metaphor about the heart as the love uh, organ, right? And it's always been thought of as metaphorical, and we draw a heart like this, but the heart actually looks different. So we thought, oh, that's just metaphorical. But when you get heartbroken, where does the pain come from? It emanates from the heart. When you fall in love, where does the feeling of love pour out of? It comes from the heart. The literal physical organ of the heart produces oxytocin. Did you know that? Isn't that crazy? The bonding hormone, the love hormone is produced from the heart itself. But that's not all. The heart produces an incredible array of uh, endocrine or ho hormone-based or um, chemicals that are not produced anywhere else in the body. And I'm going to bore you with some scientific terms, but I just want you to know that these are out there and researched and you can go do further research if you're, if you're questioning about this. ANP, atrial natriuretic peptide. Okay, so ANP, and we can learn about what this does. I could tell you more, but I don't want this to be a, an hour long lecture. But ANP has all sorts of effects. It's produced from the heart and it has all sorts of effects throughout the body. So it goes and talks to the kidney and the liver and the brain and all sorts of other aspects of the body. CNP, C-type natriuretic peptide. HPVD, heart produced vessel dilator. So it opens up and it interacts and it um, it's a pre-trigger to vasopressin, which helps open up bloodstream and shunt out things like uh, adrenaline or cortisol. So very important, vasopressin actually encourages and promotes the uh, sort of anti-stress and anti-anxiety effects in the body. But it comes first from HPVD, which then goes and tells the body to make vasopressin. Very interesting. CGRP, calcitonin gene-related peptide. L-DOPA, the precursor to dopamine. You need L-DOPA to actually create dopamine and tyrosine and all phenylalanine and all the other things related to dopamine. L-DOPA comes from the heart. BNF, brain natriuretic peptide. Okay, all of these names, and there's more, of course. We're just giving you a general overview. So you can really see these are all endocrine hormones, um, feeling-based uh, chemicals being uh, created in the heart and released into the body. And BNF particularly and specifically, this chemical protects the heart and the brain, specifically the hippocampus. So the heart has a brain protective factor. And not only that, but not, not just any part of the brain, but the hippocampus, which we know is connected to long-term and short-term memory. So that's very interesting. So there's a memory connection from the BNF uh, production of the endocrine chemical um, that a heart may produce that goes right to the brain of the human, connecting the heart and the brain um, and the heart and memory directly. The heart is also, and lastly, in this short video, the heart is an energy organ. So the heart produces an electromagnetic field or a magnetic electrofield, however you want to think about that, that is detectable up to several feet beyond the physical body. Now, I believe, I could be wrong, but uh, I have heard that it's detectable up to 10 feet from the human body in any direction. So my heart energy field is not just in front of my heart, but in all directions. 10 feet away from me, you can actually detect the electromagnetic field that is being produced by a human body. And it's not that it stops at 10 feet, or if you want to say, oh, oh, it only goes out four feet, fine. It doesn't stop at four feet. That energy moves throughout the entire universe. Um, but it, what it means is we don't have the detectable, um, we don't have the detection devices that can really measure it. Um, beyond 10 feet or four feet or two feet or whatever you whatever you're comfortable with. Regardless, it is well known that the heart produces an energy field because the heart isn't a biological oscillator. It pumps on and off, on and off, on and off. And of course it creates these waves of electromagnetic frequencies. Uh, so this field that the heart then creates feels the outside world. Think about like vibes. Do you ever get a vibe like this guy's not a good guy or I don't want to go down that alley or, oh, I walked into the room and I got this crazy bad vibe or good vibe, right? Or think about auras, like this person has a really, you know, kind aura. And some people actually see auras, but now we can actually connect it to a, a physical mechanism that the heart is a biological oscillator that produces standing waves that are interacting with the external world uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum, right? This field this electromagnetic field sends and receives information in a moment-by-moment -moment matter in a level of sophistication that is beyond comprehension, truly, truly beyond comprehension, because it's sending and receiving information from everything from the smallest microbe to the gravitational effects of planetary bodies on the Earth and on human beings and everything in between. It's an unbelievable, sophisticated sense organ or energy organ. 
the field is in a torus shape. The best way to think about a torus is to just think about an apple or a tree. A tree creates a, there's a germination point in a tree, and then it grows out in both directions. The, the branches sort of like unfolding out this way, and the roots unfolding out that way, and that creates what is a torus. If you think about an apple, if you think about the Earth's, um, the Earth itself has a, a magnetic field outside of it and an atmosphere outside of it in space that is a torus shape. Torus is one of the key foundational patterns of all of creation throughout the known universe at small scales and the larger scales. And of course, your heart creates a torus shape. So that means there would be somewhat of an opening at the bottom and the top, and it would be moving in all directions uh, otherwise. Now, heart rate variability is the way that we can measure sort of how the heart is interacting in a beat by beat, moment by moment basis, how it's interacting with the rest of the health systems of the body. And if we had to pick one thing, one way to sort of determine and um, one way to measure whether somebody is in a biophysiological chemical healthy state or a biophysiological chemical unhealthy state, it would probably be the single metric of heart rate variability. So if you can learn to measure your heart rate variability, and there are devices for this, um, but also track it and learn what improves your heart rate variability, that single metric to optimize would improve all other metrics downstream. Uh, heart rate variability is kind of the highest place in the landscape. Um, so it's the easiest way to measure our heart health is through heart rate variability, but also I would say our general health and our general resilience and our general levels of stress. Heart rate variability is the variation between each heartbeat and can indicate our general stress level. So beat by beat by beat, you have what's called a heart rate variability, which changes between beats. Um, and it's the relationship between your heart and the rest of your nervous system. That's pretty fascinating. I hope you liked that video. I find the heart to be absolutely fascinating. If you haven't, please download the free uh, ebook that I wrote called The Owner's Manual Part 2 that has all this information and a ton more information just about being a human, right? It's kind of the owner's manual, at least a very small part of it. So get that. It's free. It'll come right to your email. That was your heart is not a pump. So what is it? And now you know, not only does it have its own memory, it's an endocrine organ or a hormone organ. It's an energy organ. It's a memory organ. It's very fascinating. The more we study the heart, the more we don't realize that we know, but we're uncovering the majesty of the heart. And I think we're reclaiming the poetic nature and the sort of profound connection to human um, experience that the heart connotes. The heart is sort of the center of the soul's experience. The, the true essence of being a human is centered at the heart. No longer is it just a mechanical pump. Instead, it's taking its rightful place now that we know this as the center of human experience. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please like it. Uh, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and all that sort of stuff. If you have thoughts or comments, please comment below. I love reading those. Other people get a lot out of them. So what what are you thinking? What's on your mind when you when you learned about this? Uh, when you learned all about the heart in this way, what comes to mind for that? Do you have any stories of people with heart transplants and memories being uh, conferred to that new person? Um, anything like that? Put that in the comments. I would love to see that. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye bye.